This video is sponsored exclusively by the IA firm CCMS and Associates. Want to go behind the scenes with a fast growing and innovative IA firm? A firm that not only has traditional independent adjusting roles like property field and desk adjusting work, residential and commercial, etc., but who is also innovating new ways to serve the industry by helping carriers better serve their customers. In this exclusive IA firm profile, I interviewed the leadership team of the IA firm CCMS and Associates about who they are, what they offer to carriers and their associates, that's adjusters like me and you, who and what they're looking for in new adjusters and where they're going in the 21st century. My name is Cassandra Han Gallegos. I'm the founder, CEO, and Chief Claim Officer of CCMS and Associates. We're a specialized insurance adjusting firm. We focus on carrier solutions in the claim service sector. I'm a 33-year claim professional. I've been um, in adjusting for a long time and uh, based on the Florida market, but um, obviously experienced in multiple states. I have been both the um, manager of a large international adjusting firm, um, handling statewide services, um, to actually being carrier. So most of my career has been half insurance carrier and half independent adjuster. What I've found by seeing both sides of this service, right, of claims and how we all operate together. I actually have a 360 view of the claim service end, you know, what we do as independent adjusters and how that creates um, the impact for the carrier. So when I decided to open up CCMS and Associates, my entire goal was to take all the great things that I learned from all the companies I've been, I've been with, both independent adjusting firms and from insurance carriers and put aside the things that I didn't like. Um, so we really based the company on foundations, some foundation core things we wanted to continue on and we're going to keep that DNA, it's in our DNA, um, going forward. And one of the core issues is how we interact with our associates and our associates are everyone in the firm, everyone that we do work with, that we partner with. We want to be as um, communicative as possible. We want to make sure they feel the value of what they bring to the table. Without our associates, we can't be who we are, right? Now that's employees and our 1099 associates. So really lucky to, to have that first core value to say, everyone needs to feel important and understand how they're part of the solution and then the next part is that we have a diverse and depth of experience in, in all lines of adjusting and so that we are giving enough support to our associates, right, to learn more, do more, ex expand their knowledge. Um, and in that return, they have actually expanded their lines of service they can offer. You know, we've all grown from the process, right? And then, of course, backed it up to our clients. Our clients get the benefit of that. First core is great communication, understanding that we're all together, the experience. The second one is the experience to back that up. Um, the, the third, and they're, they're all weighted the same, is really we understand. I've been a field adjuster. I've been an independent. I understand what it is. And, and we, we want to make sure that our associates understand that, example, if you have to leave for a family emergency and you can't finish out the assignments, or you, you can finish out your assignments, but you can't finish, continue working with us for two weeks during a cat because you have to go take care of an emergency, please take care of that and then come back to us. You know, it's, it's, it's how you handle the offboarding and onboarding of information. So our goal is to make sure that we support you during that time. And we have a lot of adjusters who have just stayed doing daily claims in certain areas. And when a cat happens, they choose not to leave because they enjoy working with our management team. I, I believe if I'm an independent adjuster, I'm looking for the ease of doing business, getting knowledge, right? Making sure we connect. So that's my key issue here is that we want to make sure that CCMS is formed on that, that we actually help our 1099 associates. For the corporation as a whole, our goal is um, we are a family oriented company. We, um, my partner and my husband, life partner, um, is the chief operating officer, Hernando Gallegos. We actually raised a family of six. Um, and we're very focused on understanding how that impacts your work life. 
So in your work life can be everything from working, you know, cat duty, 12 months, seven days a week. That's challenging, isn't it? Um, so we really want everyone to feel that um, we understand. Um, of course, it is about business. We've got to get things done and, and continue to grow. The, one, of the, one of the fourth things that we've also focused on in foundation was continue to grow, continue. I'm a continuing education provider. I teach adjusters. Um, we go to subject matters. We bring up different ideas, new and inventive ideas. Um, we teach basics. Those, that's really important. Um, if you don't continue to grow, you're not going to expand your knowledge. You'll be obsolete soon, right? Uh, just doing one thing at a time doesn't, uh, or one thing your entire career doesn't get you anywhere, right? It's the same thing, and especially in this new technology world we have in claims. Um, you know, if, if we're not able to manage through this new technology that's coming into the claims service sector, we will be obsolete. And uh, CCMS and Associates is focusing on not only the use of technology, but creating its own too, by the way. We're actually in some development processes to help um, keep our insurance adjusters active and in the technology sector while we're doing our work. We're not going to be obsolete, I promise that. Learning is important um, and teaching. Um, and, then, and then also being innovative. Um, CCMS is, was designed to be innovative, so as an insurance adjusting firm, we knew, and when I formed this, we knew that the idea of, of walking into a very busy space, right, there's a lot of insurance adjusting firms, a lot of what makes us different was the key. So really focused on the important sectors for the insurance carriers. Yes, we can adjust very well on the front side first touch claim, but where carriers have a lot of challenges is trying to resolve problems, resolve issues and claims, resolve the difficult things. So because of our depth of carrier experience, we saw that as something that we could provide a solution to, both in the field and at the desk, and that's both residential, commercial, property adjusting, and that's where we started. So we started on the difficult side of the claim process, and with that, um, that's innovative because I believe that we, you know, we generally as independent adjusters, we usually focus on the first touch, the cat. It's not the long-term tail at the end. It's very interesting if anybody's ever done commercial adjusting. The challenge during a commercial claim is the period of restoration. That's a really large, it's the very beginning of the claim, and that can be a very large portion of a commercial claim. So um, often carriers hire out loss consultants and building consultants to evaluate the restoration period, but that's already done. So we're really lucky to um, have a program where we're training adjusters, we're training people outside the adjusting, adjusting industry to come into the adjusting industry to actually be a clerk of works, which is a very detail-oriented individual. You sit on the property every day during that period of restoration and you understand how a building can be restored, you document, you um, record, and you report, and you work very closely with an EGA, um, it's an executive general adjuster or a GA on the project. The end goal is that person is there to hold the restoration firm accountable and to make sure the plan of repair is being completed or restoration is being completed. So it's really a, a unique position, and it's usually been held outside of the adjusting world, but um, again, Innovation, that's what we do, and we're trying to solve that and bring that into the adjusting world, which is where it should be, in my opinion, because you're a part of damages. is obviously a big part of adjusting, too. Imagine being on a, you know, a condo unit, right, the, the large building, ex exposure building. What we teach our uh, clerk of works adjusters is twofold. You know, why are you there? You know, that's really important. The key is why. Well, you've, you've got a plan of restoration that's been agreed to by the carrier or by the, you know, of course, general adjuster who works for the carrier. But um, our job in that role is to ensure that plan is placed in action and there's no overages. And if there is an overage or a, or a deviation from the plan, we're there to identify it quickly, right there live, 
and uh, work to resolution with, with a team. Adjusting isn't always about you only being the only one on site, right? It is sometimes a team event where you are both, uh, maybe you're working with someone else. Um, you might even be hiring out an engineer. You might hire out a loss consultant for a specialized um, commercial building. You know, consider the, the lead buildings, right? The, the LEE buildings, right? That are the uh, green buildings. Now we have green buildings. And who, who adjusted a Tesla roof yet? I mean, you know, think about all the unique things we have to do and learn as adjusters. But it's not always about just you. You have a team, so you have to be able to work with others. And you have to recognize everyone's role as a value added. So the clerk of works is a very valuable role. Um, we have positions that we're training for. I think we have our first class starting August. I think it's August 3rd. I've got to look that date up again. But we have a first class starting August um, where we, we hope to see about 25 adjusters in this class. We're looking for a clerk of works adjusting role. We're looking for someone who's detail oriented. Um, we would prefer them to already have had their WRT, I, I, their IICRC WRT certification. Um, we will work with them if they don't have that. Um, this is an independent adjuster role. It is a 1099 role and very deployable during CAT. Um, this is multi-state deployable. It is on commercial property. So the, the best candidate for that role is someone who maybe doesn't want to um, run the roads in, in a CAT situation and can be in one place for a long time post-CAT. You know, an event happens, these, these positions are deployed for up to 24 months sometimes. And um, that might be on multiple buildings, multiple work sites. Um, detail is the biggest thing. Understanding materials, understanding restoration period, uh, water extraction, um, drying, Anything to do with if a fire happened? Do they have any uh, material or any testing uh, that they've done um, with material testing too? So some of those are important um, components, but the most important one is detail oriented and, uh, and um, ability to uh, communicate effectively with multiple multiple individuals, right? You know, and that's usually the core of an adjusting, right? It'd be, to be uh, communication is key, but. Um, I, I believe adjusters have the right skill set because we are detail oriented already and we're able to understand estimating practices and we can read the plan of restoration because we really have a clear understanding what the estimate builds. So it's, it's a great transition. So again, the key person who would fit in this role would be the person who doesn't want to um, continue to move during a catastrophe situation to different locations where they would be more established for a 12 to 24 month period. Um, and this is an independent adjuster role. Um, it is still used in non-CAT events, but it's not as frequent and it would be used um, at you know, a, large, a large commercial fire would be a, an example where that period of restoration would actually be important, right? Because there's still water that gets into a building, there's still a period of does the, does the entire wall go or is it just a partial wall? So there's a lot of opportunities during non-CAT events for this position, but it's really used right now for CAT. What's, what's the rate? Well, <laughs> it's a day rate. You know, you talk about day rates. So what can, a, what can a catastrophe adjuster make during a period of time, right? How long? You really understand if you're, if you're operating in CAT, how many claims can you realistically handle? And how long do you want to do it, right? You can make a lot of money really quick, but how long can you work seven days a week and how many claims in seven days can you actually inspect, write by the insurance company's guidelines, return all the phone calls, schedule out again, right? Do the whole cycle of turning it in the next day. Let's just say we're optimal in turning it in the next day. How many can you really truly do? And then you have to decide how long you can work. If you've never had that experience before, it's um, very um, challenging. Great time management if you, you're successful at it. The adjusters in the clerk of work position really need to be experienced. Um, and I say experienced, they need to understand 
the cycle of the claim process. They need to have been on properties. They need to understand commercial building materials. Um, they need to have a basis of understanding for that too. So, you know, I don't know that it would necessarily fill a um, person who is in their first year of adjusting, but possibly with aptitude, uh, uh, an adjuster has been two to five years would fill very fill this role really well. Detail is important, but the construction restoration period. So probably if you're looking at someone who was in a water extraction company, right? That that'd be great because they've had hands-on experience. They know what materials, what what to call each of the pieces of equipment. I mean, they consider all of that. Maybe they just entered into the adjusting world. Well, they would probably get a a couple points ahead of the other because they've had that depth of water extraction experience. For 2020, CCMS is um, making an investment and continued investment to make sure every state is, is a CCMS state that we can service claims if, as we're asked by insurance carriers. 2021, we expand into different um, and continue different disciplines. So 2021, we'll be adding our liability um, I've, again, we have a lot of diversity, liability, trucking, you know, auto, hull, aviation, marine, farm. So 2021, we have a very aggressive plan to add those other claims service lines. And um, so that's, all that is is opportunity, right? So maybe if this adjuster or one adjuster doesn't have necessarily the skill set to fill in for clerk of works position if they're interested or go for training, but maybe their other skill set is in another discipline. Maybe they might be better suited as a desk adjuster, or maybe they might be better suited in a, a maybe they want to be a supervisor, right? Think about those roles as we're, we're an expanding company and we're a mix between employees and 1099s. And as we grow, our goal is to continue to expand offerings. So, so 2020 is to finish out our, our every state offering. So I'm looking, we're looking for people right now. Uh, Florida, we are um, extremely busy. We've increased our claim volume uh, year over year by 25% post Hurricane Irma. So um, that's important. We talk about claim volume being low. Uh, we're kind of the opposite. So we're, we're, getting, we're getting market share, right? So Florida, we need adjusters who are in the residential um, sector, who can do residential fast track, who can do residential, you know, it's this fast track uh, field, who can do residential um, complex handling, um, daily, hurricane, and then of course um, our dispute resolution side. We have a couple more months left uh, that homeowners in the state of Florida can make a hurricane claim post Irma and it will get very busy. That's, that's where Florida's at right now. Uh, we're seeking adjusters in Colorado, California, Texas, and those who wanna be TWIA certified. We actually are a um, provider for TWIA, Texas Windstorm Assist in, in Insurance Association and Texas Fair Plan, and we actually are doing daily work in Texas for that, for that organization, but you have to be certified and we're one of the companies that can certify you. You have to go through a training process and take a test and be certified to show your proficiency and the knowledge of that carrier. There's so, such a variety of adjusters, right? I mean, think about it. You're, you're not only property, residential, commercial, um, earthquake coverage, or TWIA certification, or North Carolina J certification, JUA certification. Think about all the other disciplines, your farm equipment, your, your hull, your inland marine, your ocean marine. Um, heavy equipment, docks and piers, docks and piers. Yeah. Does anybody understand that you can just be an adjuster focusing on docks and piers? That just uh, blows your mind sometimes when you think about it. Uh, as, we, as we evolve in the adjusting world, technology will be part of this and carriers will look at a way to reduce their cost. COVID-19 has kind of forced carriers to really start accelerate that, right? Um, again, as a technology-based independent adjusting company, we understand that technology is here. I, I think I talked to one of our associates, was it back in 2019, where there are a lot of tornadoes in the Missouri area that hit, and they were planning on leaving and 
handling a cat because they expected to be there. So we said, okay, the caseload you have, good, take care of it, thank you. When you're, when you're back from cat, give us a call, we'll be ready to get you back on and ready to handle claims. Two days later, I got the call and found out that they did not get the call to Missouri. And the reason why was because the insurance carriers there got together and decided to use the drive-by photo documentation upload to the home office and the home office would write the estimate, the, the virtual adjusting role, right? It wasn't called virtual adjusting then, but that's really what it was. It's a drive-by photo. So when you think about that, what does that mean? Are we obsolete as adjusters? You know, as field adjusters? Well, well no, CCMS isn't because what's happening now in Missouri is those first-time adjusters that, that um, first-time claims that were done by photo and uploaded, now there's complex issues on the back of that. That particular estimate that was created at the desk maybe didn't solve everything. And so there's reinspections needed. Well, that's an in-person process. So CCMS was designed, we know that technology is here, we're designed to take on that next problem. And it doesn't necessarily have to go right to appraisal or right to mediation. There's, that's what we do is dispute resolution. So we, I see that technology is a necessary, it's going to be part of, our, part of our adjusting profession. We have to accept it, embrace it, and find ways to include it in our services, not just using like exact makes claim experience. Um, actually, CCMS and Associates found ways to do that before claim experience came out with, with policyholders who had immune deficiency issues, right? We had some of our policyholders who were saying, I don't want you to come in my house because I'm being treated for, you know, cancer, you know, whatever the case may be. We found solutions through Skype or through MS Teams to send them an invite before that and do a virtual platform of inspection. If you look at our world today, how much has changed and technology has infiltrated where communication is key, it's immediate, right? All of those things that happen in the adjusting world. Our job at CCMS and Associates is to make sure that our profession continues and that we integrate technology so that we continue. So as adjusters, what are we? We're everything from um, engineers, right? Um, sometimes we're counselors, some psychologists, we're always communicators. We might be first aid people sometimes, right? If we, you know, but we, we walk into people's lives when they've had the most difficult time. And this is business owner people, right? You know, we, we, we think people are just residential properties or auto accidents with individuals, but there are also businesses that are affected. And sometimes I think businesses have even a wider impact because they might be infected, uh, you know, what happened at that business also has affected all the employees of that business. I mean, we're seeing that right now, obviously, in our economy. I love the fact that we're adjusters and we get to go in and help, and that's the first focus. Our job is there. It's the answer to the policy that they signed and paid for to provide service and gather information for the insurance company to finish the process. And without our expertise, which includes helping a policyholder understand the claim process, doing our job very well, the carrier can't finish the promise, right? So. Um, we really are, I look at all claims organizations um, in an insuring cycle. Um, you know, marketing sells it, underwriting makes the policy create, but at the end of the day, it's the claims that is the first touch of the policyholder when they have an event. It's not just the billing cycle, it's when they have an event, and that's when the customer service comes in. So. Um, it is challenging, um, like you mentioned, the condo policies were the most difficult ones. That's why you have a team. Sometimes you have to accept that other people, um, the right skill set. Maybe condo isn't your thing. What about churches? Have you? There's pretty steep roofs on, on churches, right? So that's not my thing. <laughs> I don't want to climb a church roof anymore. I think I've done that a couple of times in my career and um, realized that that height was not my, uh, was not my bailiwick. So how do you go from doing residential 
stick built and they're like, okay, I want to do condos, right? You've been doing that for four or five years, daily and catastrophe. So how do you go from there to do condos? Do you just say one day I want to do condos? With CC Messon Associates and our, our deep team, uh, you know, our claim director, um, our director of resource, if you say, I'm interested in doing this work, well, we're going to have some questions about aptitude, ability. Are you easy to um, communicate with? If, as a 1099 um, independent adjuster that you're contracted with us, if you can't communicate with your management team that, that works with you, they really don't want to spend time training, right? So you have to come to the table willing and eager to learn, um, to spend some time on your own, to be certified in other things. You, you've got to show that that effort that you want to be doing that, and we'll train you. You know, we actually, we really believe that um, everyone has the right seat to fill in the claim service organization, and we're pretty good at identifying and training people who want to be trained. Well, this is somebody who's been, you know, somebody who does, does it for 20 years. Maybe they don't know what dispute resolution is. We've taken over 50 adjusters that were just residential adjusters, which I don't want to say just residential, residential adjusters, and taught them how to be insurance carrier adjusters, where they finish the entire claim process, resolve a dispute between a policyholder and insured before appraisal, and actually secure policyholder releases so that the claim there's no more claim issues, there's no outstanding issues, both the policyholder and the carrier understand that and they've concluded the claim. That's um, pretty exciting to be able to take a group of people and explain that process and create a process to, to create a solution. Um, it's not easy. The same thing with Clark of Works, the same thing with any other discipline, condo. You have to be willing to learn. I've seen a lot of resumes where all I've done on my resume is been a catastrophe adjuster only. I've only done cat claims and that's all I want to do is cat claims. It, it's, it's interesting to look at that same person who for the same number of years, six years say, also did cat claims but you can see on the resume where they became exact level training and stability training and they also started their AIC or they went to different levels of training and um, then they started working in different types of claims. And you can see that on the resume. And you, that's important, the resume speaks about you know, what you've accomplished. So if I'm looking at a resume with someone who's been doing CAT only for six years and someone who's starting to train getting certifications, you can see they're really trying, and this particular person that does CAT didn't do any of that. Well, I'm more interested in the person who's continual learning, right? And, and I think that person has enough curiosity, they might want to learn condos, they might want to learn different things. So that's really, um, it's exciting to see someone who's doing that for that long that's willing to continue to learn. We, we look for that for the AIC's Associated Claims from the, um, the institutes. And an AIC, I'm an AIC, an Associates of Claims, it actually provides a well-rounded understanding of the insurance cycle. It's a good basis. Um, CPCU, Chartered Properly, Underwriting Casually. Those, those designations open doors for you. Is it the first thing as a whole that independent adjusters look for and, uh, and it affirms and I would say no unless you're a specialty firm like us. When we're, when we're looking for people who want to learn litigation management or looking into that more complex claim side or be an account manager for example on a Lloyd's policy, we're looking for an AIC, a CPCU. And in fact we, we, our employees, we have three people who are shooting for that CPC right now and we're reimbursing them for that. So it's kind of exciting to, to see. As an independent adjuster, it is valuable if, you're will, if you want to learn more. I think the first thing I would do is get your estimating platforms, you know, continual learning on that. That's your first thing. 
if I saw a resume that had, again, that additional learning and an AIC, and then they had a, that behind them they had a general adjuster role, I would probably say that that fits very well. And it would, it would show um, experience. So uh, CCMS isn't looking just for AICs or CPCU candidates. It's not an easy discipline and it's a lot of self-study. Um, but if, if I saw that, it would make me look up um, for me, for our company, because of our specialty work. And I don't think a lot of independent adjusters, adjusting firms, look for that necessarily. Um, so it just depends on what, what you want to do. It was interesting, we were recently described, you know, we we're, a, again, a super regional, going nationwide 2020, we were recently described by independent adjuster as a big mom and pop, um, quote unquote. I thought it was interesting to have that from his perspective, the feel that he could call anybody here at the company and get an answer. Um, and often I use days that I get a chance just to call our associates and say thank you for sharing their talents with us because they have a choice. And they, that's pretty exciting for me to be able to say as the founder and you know, chief claim officer and have a great management team that they communicate with everyone on a day-to-day -day basis, but just to say thank you for sharing their talents. We haven't solved everything yet because um, carriers require you use their systems, right? But for CCMS's internal operations, our goal, again, remember one of the foundings, ease of, ease of communication, ease of use, it, claims are hard enough to process and handle as it is, why add more complication? So we use a management structure where you're reporting through maybe a shared management structure, but that's a knowledge base. So client A, who wants it done with you know the report a, a certain way versus client B, you report, you report to do different knowledge base experts, right? So that they know exactly what the client wants and they're gonna give you that very clear. This client wants th this way. So we're gonna train to the client expectations and um, we focus that in our management team. So it's important we have backup, right? Somebody in our management team might be out, but we really focus our management team to say, you're gonna handle all client A's work and you're gonna handle all client B's work and you're gonna help those adjusters understand what they need. So one independent adjuster who works for us and does client A and B in one day may be working with two different managers. But what they get out of that is a very deep knowledge of what that client wants. That manager is not managing 20 clients. We, we don't find that effective because that dilutes the knowledge base. And, it, and, and I know it's hard as independent adjusters, we could be handling 10 claims with 10 different clients. Well, you've got to start knowing first what that client wants in their return. And so we focus that in a, so, so it's a client um, focus structure versus one, um, one adjuster reporting to a team manager, but there'd be 20 adjusters and it's all the different clients. So we're, I think we're probably built a little differently than other independent adjuster firms because we focus on that knowledge base management style. We take live examples and we use those as, okay, this is step one, right? This is where you find this information and, and Believe it or not, where we started doing that was years ago with Manufactured Home. Think about that. Now, again, that deck page that had the add-ons, we had to show where that was because you needed to know how to use that tool. So we do that on the onboarding section. When you come on to CCMS and Associates, what, which, which carrier can you work with? Can you not work with? What can you do? What do you want to do? Right? Those are kind of the key questions there. You work with um, a claim director or a manager as you onboard. Well, I want to do it all. Might be an independent, you know, independent adjuster's role. Well, let's start with one and see how you do, right? See how you like that. And maybe if that doesn't work, we find your skill set that you are really good at. And then we might move you to a different client base. That's really what we do. So we start focusing on one type of work 
It might be two different clients if you can, you know, if you want that, but it might be just daily front end work, or maybe it's dispute resolution only. But we start working there, and then we, we train and find the next role. And uh, it's really exciting to see someone take on something new, right? But to do it, we have to show you how to do it first. We have to, it, here's just a claim, just handle the claim that doesn't yeah. work very, there's no expectations laid out, or I, I just think that would be uh, difficult for an independent adjuster to walk into a new IA firm and not understand before you go out to that policyholder's house what's expected of you. Because you're gone, and then you found out, oh, they needed a photograph of the four corners of the house and all elevations, right? Rather than just the front picture with the address. So, you know, or they needed a picture of the attachment of the fence to the house versus just the fence. So uh, those are kind of key photos that we talk about that are important, but did you know that on, on every claim you needed that? And now you have to go back out to the house and do that again? That's a waste of time, right? So we train before you go out to your first one. And then you get the opportunity to an, an advance, right, from there. So we're not going to be perfect the first time we do anything. So all we can do is improve yeah. and be willing to consider that we have some improvement too, right? I think one of the hardest things for that we see adjusters is that they um, present something through our management team and they're so strongly confident that that was the right way to do it. Well, often um, we find that, yes, it is a right way, but there are other right ways to do things too. And this particular client wants us to do it the other right way. So that, that's probably one of our biggest challenge. But if you have an open mind to consider alternative ways of doing things to get to the same answer, the right answer, that's key, you, your willingness to work. But if you know what your expectations are before you go there, then you don't have to, you're, you're meeting those expectations, right? Yeah. That's what your assignment is to meet those expectations or exceed them actually. So as long as in the training process, you understand what's expected of you, right? What the outcome that, and your authority that you have, that's key. What authority do you have to make decisions? I had one adjuster, who went um, to a reinspection because the it was a rock roof. We love rock roofs, right? Because they're always interesting and very old. Flat rock roof, right? And one of the questions, the only way he could think at, on site at the moment to solve this complaint of the policyholder was to offer to take a core sample to see if hail had damaged the roof. He made that commitment right there at the property. Well, the carrier had not approved that course sampling and um, often if you take a course sample then you have to do some type of repair to that roof and I was speaking to that adjuster about his choices at the property what made him feel because the next thing happened is the policyholder actually complained they didn't want a course sample out of the roof and the carrier complained and we had this big conversation about why did that person feel the need to create that solution or what other solutions could that person have said and that's what you have to think about it's not you know we're going to teach you how to do or you're going to know how to do a b c d but when something comes out of the blue what's your answer is it offering something that you have no authority to offer right from you know what's your assignment and what's your answer so maybe his answer when the insurer kept on saying there's hail damage or the roofer that was there with the insured said there's hail damage to this roof that obviously had no hail damage. The opportunity would say, I'm going to report the facts. I will get back with you. There is nothing wrong with saying I will get back with you with the way that the carrier has chosen to investigate that. Is what, that would have solved that situation right there. And of course, then you do get back to them. You know, you, you handle it you make those additional calls and, and go from there. It's really interesting how if you don't think about the off questions and how you're gonna, how you're gonna answer that, uh, what, what do you do? Like right now, um, during, and we have a long period of time where people don't want you in your home. They don't, they don't wanna be in the home, right? With you. They don't want you in the home or they're concerned, where have you been? Or you might have to answer questions or if there's an attorney representing the insured what if the attorney submits to you while you're at the property 
you must sign this release of liability that you are not exposed or have any exposure to COVID-19. Would you do it? What if at an insured's property you arrive and they're represented by an attorney and there's a videographer there that's going to follow you around while you're inspecting the insured's house? Would you agree to be recorded? So those are the things that we talk to our team about. What do you do in certain situations? What are your options? And uh, those are specialized training sessions, you know, but you have to know what your authority is first. A lot of things that happens in, uh, in claims adjusting that um, as long as you're able to provide that, okay, this is my authority, this is my, this is my assignment, my authority, and if that, that comes out of the blue, some of those unusual things, you have a management team to go back to right then and there and you should be able to get a hold of anyone in that management team. That's what we do at CCMS and Associates. We really are there to support you every moment that you're out there as independent adjusters. That's key for us. Because again, if you don't succeed, we don't succeed. And if you're the person that says, I'm gonna take a sample of your, core, <laughs> of your roof and you had no authority, it really creates a problem for the entire organization. Um, so we're there to support that. Hi, my name is Hernando Gallegos. I am the COO of CCMS and Associates. CCMS and Associates is an IA firm, or a boutique IA firm. Uh, our flagship is a dispute resolution product that we help carriers post uh, catastrophe. Somebody might not agree with a, uh, with a roof replacement versus a repair. Um, we go out there and, and make sure that we reinspect and find out what's going on. We're the last people to touch the claims. Uh, we also do uh, catastrophe dailies. Uh, commercial and we're expanding nationwide. We are expanded nationwide. Um, we're growing we're growing rapidly. Our uh, internal team of 31 employees. Um, everyone has very uh, very specialized individuals. Everyone has um, their special talents that they bring to the firm. So we try to recognize people's strengths and put them where um, they would fit best um, with their talent level. Well, we, we look for uh, individuals that have special talents, not only in the claims industry, but also in the construction industry. Uh, one of the things that we're looking for now that we're building for our, our cat response, for commercial cat response, is a clerk of works position. So we need a detail-oriented, construction-minded, um, independent adjuster. They're the individuals that make sure that if the restoration company comes in and says, hey, we, we've got 20 individuals into this condo complex, he's going to make sure that there's 20 individuals. He's going to make sure that they, that they sign in and that they're there for the day. What we're trying to avoid are the um, companies that do things like will put one person on one job and also sign them up at another job site for the same time. So we're watching the purse strings. We're trying to watch out for our clients and we're also trying to make sure that the restoration process gets done as it should in a timely manner. Yeah, if they're billing for it, you, they need to justify it, just like anything else in this industry. If, if we have a, a claim that somebody has a supplement for it, you just have to, you just have to justify it. It's a, it's a, a, during a CAT event, be there 10, 12 hours a day, making sure that the details are taken care of. And it's gonna take the right person, yeah. and it's gonna take the right training. And so we're developing the training program for this. Well, we're trying to continually train our individuals in the, in the way that, that we think that the client needs to, the direction that the client's looking for. So for every independent adjuster that comes to see us, if they're on a specialty product, let's just say, um, let's just say TH, for example, for a, a client, they have to have a special type of uh, knowledge base of software. Not necessarily exact, exactware product, but maybe a stability type product. So we'll, we will teach the right individuals how to use this type of software. We have training classes, we have a manager that teaches it, and we have videos that they can reference to. Not just that, but um, every adjuster's work goes through a QA process. So if they're, if they're having any difficulty and they need to get through it, they're not there alone. We're always there helping them through the process and until they get it. Comprehension is very important for us. Uh, so we're, obviously an intelligent adjuster is going to retain everything that you teach them and you're not gonna to have to repeat yourself five, six times in a month to say, hey, this is what we need, and you know, keep returning it back. We want a good adjuster that can comprehend, and we're ready to teach them. We're looking for adjusters that are interested in lifelong learning. You don't have to be a five, 10-year guy. We love five-year adjusters, 10-year adjusters, obviously, but not everybody's there, right? 
So we, we want to try to develop people from a knowledge base that they want to learn. If they're just there for the money, it's not going to work. If they're there to learn a new craft, we're there to teach them and we're going to develop them. We've taken, I don't know how many green adjusters, I mean completely out, just green right out of school or right from wherever. We had one guy come from a bicycle shop to us. He had a little bit of construction background, bicycle shop. He went through some training, he cut his teeth with us, went us a little slower, did some dailies for us, he shadowed, very important shadowing people. He shadowed someone because he did that on his own and he wanted to learn. We help them through the claim process as they're learning the client. They have to have obviously a knowledge base on construction and roofing and all that good stuff, but if you're a lifelong learner and you want to uh, make an impact in the industry, you have to do it yourself. You just can't expect someone to hold your hand and pull you along. You have to have that in here. And it's not about the wallet. It's about wanting to learn a new thing. And the money will come. If you're good, the money will come. I promise you. Anyone will tell you that in this industry. I, I would, I'd like to see it in a, in a newer adjuster. I'd like to see that Zach 2 or Zach 3. Um, just because it simply tells me that they've gone that extra step and gotten formal education. They might not have a working knowledge of it, but if they're green to the industry and they have a level two or a level three, it gives them a leg up from somebody who's just learning off of YouTube and hasn't really experienced it with an instructor. So um, I think it's important to, to learn from a, a professional basis. Hey, I gotta tell you, the more experience you have in different verticals, that makes you a better adjuster. Uh, if, I like to see an adjuster that, that has an electromechanical background, uh, a little knowledge about uh, uh, construction at the minimum, but he's got an idea of how things operate, how things work, how a house is put together and what type of materials are being used. I, I learned from being an aircraft mechanic, electromechanical. I also had a construction company. You take those two verticals and you throw it into a, and you throw it into a claim process where you have a house with potential electrical mechanical damage or a roofing issue or damaged windows. You can apply those. You can apply from experience. It's just your knowledge base. So if you have somebody that comes to us that maybe used to put kitchens in, for example, just the plumbing or the, the, uh, um, the tiling, you understand how the studs work, how the floor works, how the floor system operates, how the cabinets go on, uh, onto the drywall. You understand that. So your different verticals give you a deeper knowledge of how things are made. And that's important because if you can, it's almost like x-ray vision, right? You can see how it's built. If you see a damaged roof and you've already repaired it or you've already been on one and you've done the work, you get it. So you, these roofers are invaluable when they come with a roofing background and they come to be an adjuster. Those guys are experts, right? I can name, I can name a handful of guys that I'll call up out, out of our team, of our independent team, say, hey, I got a question. I'm calling him because he knows. I don't know everything. I, matter of fact, the more people I know, especially in the industry, the less I the less I know that I know, <laughs> you know? There's so much experience out there. So I learn off of everybody else also, but I also recognize their talent. So I'm gonna ask them to say, hey, can you take a look at this for me and give me your opinion on this? I have my own opinion on it, but if you can give me an opinion on this, that means, that means uh, much more than just mine. Actually, I thought it was 27. Yeah. <laughs> it might be 27, but Brock would have a better idea of that. That's, that's really his uh, department on, on where we're putting people. What would the ideal candidate, you know, show up with? Hopefully a ladder. <laughs> Some measuring devices, right? <laughs> their smartphone and uh, their computer and their knowledge of software. That's, that would be the ideal candidate. Uh, all joking aside, an ideal candidate um, uh, would come armed with, with their thinking cap obviously uh, their experience level. Uh, if, you have a, if you have somebody that comes new into the industry and has tried really hard to study about roofing systems, to study about the differences between uh, types of shingles, uh, 20, 25 year, just m the material differences. Um, if you have somebody that has studied that and has tried, they're gonna be more successful. They're gonna be more valuable because they're trying harder. They're intangibles. Wanting to learn is one. Hustle's the other one. So there's a lot of intangibles out there that you can have as with, with new people bringing on. If I can teach you and you comprehend, you're already, you're already way far ahead of everybody who's, who's, who's applied, maybe has a couple years under their belt, but are, are kind of not so much about learning or advancing their knowledge. When we're involved at looking new people, and one of their descriptions is, you know, excellent customer service, well, that's kind of expected. 
that's kind of one of those intangibles that we're talking about is, is the ability to communicate. Everybody communicates differently. And that's, a, that's, that's one of the big things that we focus on is the way people communicate. I communicate in bullet points and I wanna hear things directly. You need something from me? Tell me, don't beat around the bush. Because uh, I get hints, but you know, I'm not going to really act on them. You tell me what you need, bullet points. Hey, Hernando, I need, I need some training on this piece of software. Hey, Hernando, I might not know how to exactly handle this problem situation. Well, let's, let's talk about it and let's, let's learn from it. Some insureds need a little bit more hand-holding. They're, maybe they're shy or they're, they're not bullet point people. They need a little bit more nurturing. They need someone softer to kind of explain to them, just, just easier. And then you have the ex-Marine who wants the bullet points. And then you have the grandma who really needs it softly and, and just a little bit more detail, a little bit more time, a little bit more massaging the information to her so she's able to comprehend what's going on. So you have to have an understanding on how people communicate. Because if you don't know how to people communicate and you go barging into someone's house, they're gonna be put off right away. Or if you're too soft and the insured might need bullet points, I need information, and you're just kind of lollygagging around, you're gonna have problems there too. So it's very important for, for the independent professional to understand communication as part of that customer service and how the insured or the carrier, or the um, IA company you're working for, the firm you're working for, how to have them better understand you and how you are better to understand them. And it really boils down to how they communicate. Pay attention, open your eyes, look around. You walk, you walk, you, you drive up to the insured, you walk up to the door, you see all their shoes in the front. It might be religious, it might be a cleansiness thing. We don't, you don't know. So what do you do? Take your shoes off, put booties on, respect that. You, you know right away that they have something uh, that, that they don't want shoes in their home. Recognize that. Or you might recognize the garage. You walk in there and it's a spotless garage and they have a perfectly brand new 1980 Fiero in there that they've <laughs> 20,000 miles. <laughs> well, that's fine, stay away from it, <laughs> right? Find out how they communicate and that way you're better able to communicate with them. One of the reasons we got into this is because um, we're, Cassie and I are nurturers. Uh, we raised six adults, six children, grew up to adults, they're all out of the house. Uh, I hope they're all happy, because that's what we all seek for in life. But one of the, one of the things that we, we did together is we nurtured this family. This is our baby right here, CCMS and Associates, and we treat it that way. So when we bring people into the company, we wanna make sure that we're giving the company all the good stuff. Not organic foods, we're giving them good people, we're giving them education, right? We're giving them a good platform, giving them a good infrastructure uh, 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 in, a, in a way that we can take care of our people. We pay our people good. We take care of our insurance adjusters and pay them good. We make sure that they're okay and that there's an issue. I've got no problems hopping in my truck and going down there and helping them out with something personal if there's something that they have a need for. So we consider ourselves very nurturing individuals and we consider this very important to us. And in, in, the same, in the same level, all our people are so important to us because that's what brings it all together. So I think nurturing and growing this company uh, and taking care of people is the number one thing because it's without, without our people, it's, there's nothing else. We're really hitting strides and bringing great adjusters on. Our training, our training uh, platforms are really taking off. Um, our, our modifications to our website, our, our security for our for our internet, uh, for our website, and our software is, is something that we're, we're proud of. Um, the future is growth. Getting more claims in the door, giving more work to more adjusters, keeping our people busy, feeding families. We really do. I mean, we're really all about families, and that's what we do is we feed them. Uh, the future, I'd like to be in the next five years to be the largest uh, employee-owned insurance adjusting firm in the nation. Um, and I think within six months, we'll have our hooks in a, a couple states that are difficult to get into, which will complete our 50-state expansion. Uh, and that way we can uh, have a far reach. I think I bring confidence to the team because I'm on top of it, making sure that we're safe. I make sure that everyone has everything they need to operate in this environment, whatever their environment is, either if you're remote, you're a new employee that's remote out of, out of South Georgia or 
or uh, North Carolina, if you're working, you're not in an office anymore, you're at home and you might have never worked from home before, you've been so used to working out of an office, you don't have anything. So let's talk about it. I'm a prior IT guy. I've got a home office. I've set up multiple offices. Here's what you need. And this is what we need for software. And this is how we're going to keep it safe. So any of those things prior, it's an experience level that I've come from corporate, uh, 14 years with, with the airlines, another four years with uh, uh, telecommunications. Cassie's got a corporate background too. So we already, we came to this uh, endeavor with experience on how a company works and how to keep it going uh, from the financial aspect to the data security aspect to just who orders pens and pencils and make sure that those keep going, right? I mean, we have to keep the water flowing when the office is open. So you, somebody's got to order that stuff. Somebody's got to make sure the computers are working. We have a robust ticketing system. It's a support ticketing system. It's support at ccmsclaims.com that our IAs have access to, our employees have access to. A lot of things come in there. Everything, if it's an anomaly, it goes into that ticketing system. We have four individuals in it to make sure that they're taken care of. So we're making sure that everything's running as smooth as possible. And within that ticketing system, if something keeps coming back up, continuous improvement. We have an opportunity there to fix what's going on. We have an issue with multi-factor authentication. We have an issue going with it. Well, let's find out why and let's fix it. So I don't want to see another ticket on that again. My goal is I get a couple of tickets based on one subject matter. I don't ever, never want to see it again. So I make sure that it's fixed. It makes my life easier down the road, and it makes life easier for everybody else. And it makes life easier for the IAs to know that, hey, you've got somebody out there for you. You've got somebody out there looking out for you, and you've got somebody out there that's going to help you. You're not alone. That's one of the biggest things that I think we bring is that we are there. Our number one thing here in CCMS and Associates, communication. Uh, we try to spread the wealth. We have our favorites too, but we understand that, hey, you, we have to give claims out to, the, to our entire field team, spread them out as much as possible, because how are they gonna know? How are they gonna learn? And we're gonna need them. If, if they've only done you know, five claims for us in six months because they might be too busy, and then they say, well, hey, you know, those claims I was doing six months ago from the other company have kind of dried up, and they've been do they did these, these claims, did a bang up job on these claims, you know, come on, let's, let's, let's give you some more, let's feed you some more. So our purpose is to bring in as many claims as we can and distribute them to as many people as possible. And that way we, de we, we, we uh, level the experience field and we become way more effective that way as a team. Because an IA that maybe gets five claims in three months with us, they're still an associate. They're still one of us. The name says it all, CCMS and Associates. CCMS are the employees. They're the people that we W-2 in our offices and remotely around the country. Our associates is all our independent adjusters, and they're part of our org chart. They're that important to us that they're part of it. And we've had adjusters drop out, say, hey, you know, I got this great offer from this one. I'm going to go and, you know, I'm going to be uh, staff or I'm going I'm to, they're loading me up with claims in this area. And they might have, I don't know, 20, 30 claims with us at the moment, or they might be called out on a cat. Our company, if you drop out the right way, give us a call. Let's work through these claims. Let's get through them. Let's reassign them, whatever it takes. You do what you need to do because every person has, has their own stuff going on, right? They're independent. They're independent for a reason. They're not captive to us. You do what you need to do. We're not mad at you. When you, when you want to come back, let us know. That's the way we operate. We don't just cut you off. If somebody goes out on a, if somebody goes on a cat, there's a right way to do it. Communicate, just let us know. Do your thing and you can come back. One of the beauties about our company is that we have our flagship product, our dispute resolution product that, yeah, go to the cat. The cat's gonna be this big. Dispute resolution, gonna take two, three years to, fi to finish these files and they're gonna, they're gonna be coming. So it's good stuff for that adjuster to be with us. It would behoove them to do the cat with, with CCMS and Associates. You'll get daily, you get DRT. It's good stuff, it's a win-win situation for them. And that's, that's what I like to tell them to say, to the sweetener, stay with us, and there's dispute resolution on the back end. It's not easy work, and it's not for the, it's not for the lighthearted, but I, you'll make your money, yeah. and it's long-term.
Uh, my name is Bill Hallinan. I am the Director of Claims at CCMS Associates. As the Director of Claims, my responsibilities are to make sure that we move things forward at the uh, requirements and expectations that our clients have. I'm very fortunate that we have a tremendous, tremendously talented group of supervisors and managers that oversee uh, the individual clients and make sure that everything is going well, that the field adjusters are getting the instructions and the training and the information that they need, and to make sure that we are moving things in a timely fashion as we're asked to do. Some of the daily claims we have are represented with public adjusters and with attorneys. Uh, some of our daily claims are straight up just, you know, it's you, the insured, and you go in, you handle the claim, and you get out, and you're done. We also have uh, dispute resolution claims, which can be very complicated and very tricky because they involve a lot of different things. So, uh, in dispute resolution, essentially what you're doing is the carrier has come to us and said, this claim has a dispute that's been proposed to us by this public adjuster, this attorney. The claim has already been inspected by a previous IA firm and adjuster. Uh, in dispute resolution, your job is to go and to assess what the discrepancies are between what the demand is and what the original estimate or what the original claim was, and then write your estimate for what you see the scope to be, and then at that point, you would be you have to engage and see if you can negotiate that claim to a settlement with a release. Very challenging, very difficult, but very rewarding. Uh, the dispute resolution claims, I find them to be very rewarding, uh, especially when you get that release and you know you feel like you've accomplished something because you've not only you've, you've not only done what the carrier has asked you to do, but you've also resolved an issue that an insured has had. And this claim might be two years old, might be three years old. And to know that you've been able to help the insured get this resolved, that's very satisfying for me. Um, with the dispute resolution claims, they're very tricky in the fact also that when you get them, you know that there's two paths that they could go down. There's the resolution, which is the ultimate goal. But if it doesn't get resolved, there is a chance that it may go to litigation. So you have to keep the file up to date and build a good, defendable file. Because if it doesn't get resolved, people are going to at some point, you're going to be asked about your work product, your file notes, why did you do this, why did you do that, why didn't you do something? So that's uh, very one of, the, one of the challenges with the dispute resolution files. The biggest thing that you can do on any claim, not just a dispute resolution claim, but on any claim, in my opinion, is listen. Listen to what the insured has to say. Listen to the public adjuster or the attorney's representative. You, you have to get the information. You have to understand not only what they're demanding, but why are they demanding it. You'll have instances where maybe the insured didn't get along with the original person who came out, and maybe they felt that they were being brushed off or, or not taken seriously. Um, and that's escalated into the place where the claim is now. I, I think if you just listen and you pay attention and be empathetic, don't be combative in the in the PA world in particular. Uh, there's this perception that you know they're they're the evil, they're the other side. Well, yes, they are on the other side, but be nice, be nice to people. Um, try and find something common that you have. Try and uh, strike up a conversation about something that you can talk about. Let it be known that your intention while you're there is to resolve the issues, not to acerbate it and make it worse. Um, just go out there with an open mind and a positive attitude and most times you'll have success. It's that you're, you're trying to find that common ground with them so that you know you can start to get, you know, get, get that, when you get the head nodding in that direction and everybody's starting, uh, man, things start to really fall into place and, and it happens rapidly too. The, the main thing though is after you've been out on site, you have to follow up quickly because if you don't, then they're just going to think, that you know, it was just another, you know, another fast talker trying to come in and tell me that everything was going to be okay. But when you call them the next day and say, hey, I have my estimate, I've submitted it for approval, establish a good rapport, communicate well on site, and continue the communication after the fact because that's where things really matter. You come and tell me you're going to do something, then you have to do it. 
And if you can be successful at that, you'll be successful in handling any claim. And, and I tell I tell adjusters all the time who are especially coming into the DRT world because it is at that point things have escalated. This isn't a new claim anymore. This isn't I have a public adjuster. This is I have been through many, 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 many steps through the claims process, and now we're here and we're we're coming to an ultimatum. Is you know when you get there, they think you have two horns and a tail. You have to convince them otherwise. And by being polite and by being considerate, and you know, I, go, I know I'm going back to it, but empathy, it's a big thing. If people perceive that you do truly care about their problem and you want to resolve it, which you should, then they're going to, they're going to engage you. They're going to speak to you. They're going to be respectful to you. Now, conversely, there are some situations that you get into, again, not just dispute resolution, any claim or you get out there and people are stacked against you and they, they're unreasonable and they don't want to find common ground, they want to be combative. Those are very challenging situations, but in those types of situations you have to keep your eye focused on the main thing. What is your, what is your goal to be there? Your goal is to document that lost site completely. Damaged, undamaged, everything. Because in those situations in particular, this may be the only opportunity that we have to have somebody out there to look at the damage, to address these questions. I've had situations in my past where you'll have somebody come up and they're, they're very aggressive with you. Oh, you need to look at this, you need to look at that. You also have to be firm sometimes and tell them, look, I will be more than happy to review my scope notes and everything I've done today with you, but you have to give me the opportunity to you know, do my thing and let me let me inspect this property. If I have a question, I will come and ask you. Um, and that can be challenging too, because you know it's, it's a it's a distraction technique to try and draw your focus away. And you, know, you have to stay focused. That's very important. You you know what you're there to do. Accomplish accomplish that goal. Brock Bagley, he he is our he's our key. He's the person who is onboarding people daily. Um, if he has a question about a resume or somebody's technical skills, uh, we'll have a conversation about it. Uh, sometimes, it, sometimes I'll actually call the individual myself, and, and we'll we'll discuss their background and, and their qualifications. Uh, so you know, we pr we we're a very collaborative group. Uh, we ask each other for assistance all the time because we all have strengths and weaknesses, and we all have you know we we, we want to make sure we get it right. We really care. So I participate in that regard as far as you know, the onboarding of, uh, of new adjusters. First and foremost, what I feel sets us apart from most IA firms is that we are in the business of building relationships. Not just relationships with our clients, but relationships with our 1099 adjusters. They are also our clients. If, if we do not provide support and service and training and availability, to our 1099 field adjusters, we are fa we're going to fail because our success is paramount on the adjusters. The adjusters, if they want to work for us and they want to turn in a good product, they will. It's as simple as that. And in doing that, they are making CCMS Associates successful because they're giving us what we need to process, to do a great job for the carrier. To you know, We always want to exceed the carrier's expectations and exceed their needs and there are times where we do things that the carrier didn't even know that that was something that they needed but when they identify that you know it's really it's an exciting thing because you know you've educated somebody and you know that's always a good feeling but that starts with our field adjusters so if if we're going to be successful we have to have good relationships with our adjusters i've been in situations and worked for companies where here's your claims see you later and when you try to call somebody, nobody answers the phone. If you do get an answer, um, you, it, it, sometimes it could be very condescending, like you're supposed to know this, even though this is your first time handling claims. We're very much the opposite. Um, we go through extensive training through the onboarding process, after the onboarding process. We have follow-up and continuing training. Um, we have, you know, even you know, in using exact analysis and stability products, we have a gentleman named Glenn Palome. He's uh, one of our regional managers. Glenn is an excellent teacher and he's an excellent trainer. And we will have the adjusters, either as individuals or Glenn sometimes will have the ability to do a group training session where we will train 
the, the field staff on you know, not only how to operate the system, but you know, how to meet the requirements and, and the expectations of the carrier through their little idiosyncratic things that each carrier has set up in exact analysis and those who use SimBility in SimBility. That's one thing that sets us apart big time. Actually, those two things, they kind of go hand in hand. It's not just having relationships with our adjusters, but it's the training. We provide a level of training here at CCMS that I don't know of any other carrier other than a working staff for one of the larger players in the industry would give you. Uh, another thing that we take pride in, it doesn't matter if you are trying to get a hold of your immediate supervisor, or you're trying to get a hold of a regional manager, or you're trying to get a hold of me at, at, at the director level. If you pick up the phone and call, if you don't get an answer, you will get a call back from that individual, or if that individual is not available, somebody else will be tasked with making that call to make sure that if, you, if something's wrong or you have a question or you need something, that somebody's gonna be there to deliver that. It's almost like a respect level. And we respect and we treasure and we value uh, our adjusting force. And we want them to know that. It's very important because it's not lip service. People who come on board and work for us, you're, you're going to experience, you're going to feel that. It's, it's part of our culture. We don't wanna lose it. Even though we're getting bigger and we're expanding, uh, I mean, almost daily it feels like we're expanding. We are not going to lose that, no matter how big we get. It's just, it's important. And uh, if we lose that, then we're going to lose our identity. We're going to have, op what well, we have opportunities right now in Texas. Uh, we're expanding in the Carolinas. Uh, we've been taking on claims now in Colorado. Um, these are just things that have happened, you know, things that I know of just on a, a daily type of basis of, during the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, there are other states that are in play that we're, we're going to be bulking up for. Uh, our goal is to be a national, a national company within the next uh, 12 to 24 months. That's a, that's a big thing. And uh, we're, we're focused on it. We're dedicated to it. And we're going to be needing people not just in the field. We're going to need people at the desk and because we're going, to have, uh, we're going to have carriers that are going to want us to handle things at the desk level as well. So it's, it's a very exciting time, a very exciting time to, to be a part of all this growth. We are looking for people that first and foremost are self-motivators, um, you, people who are seeking out training on their own. Um, if you're new to the if you're new to the game, uh, the adjusting world, um, it, it's nice when when I see on a resume that somebody's already taken the initiative to perhaps they've gotten Xactimate Level One certified, or they've gone to Vail National to learn literally learn courses about the insurance industry and the application of their courses in the adjusting world. Those are things that stick out to me. Uh, another thing that really really stands out for me is somebody who's taken the initiative to partner up with a with an experienced adjuster and 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 have them mentor them and teach them and you know physically go out in the field with somebody to learn how how do I set my ladder up properly so that I I, I comply with you know my safety um, you know what's the best what what techniques do you use to scope a loss uh, those are big things. People who are self-motivated, that shows me that you have a desire and you want to be successful at it. People with military experience, that's always something that you know is, is a plus for me because if you're willing to volunteer to go protect your nation, you're a special person to begin with. Those who, who possess that, that, that desire tend to, they want to learn, they want to be very good at what they do, and they, they have no problem taking direction because they know that in taking direction, they're, they're improving themselves and they're improving their abilities to, to manage a task. Stability, which is in today's world, that's a little tough sometimes, it's challenging, but to see that you know somebody's been somewhere for a, a couple of years, a few years, that's, that shows me that you know, you've been valued by somebody. Um, that's important. Um, these aren't things that are, you know, all these Check boxes have to be, you know, tick. But these are things that, you know, I personally like to see when, when, when I'm looking at a resume or I'm talking to somebody about a position. Anybody who's who's thinking about getting into this industry, number one, you have to be prepared to realize that this industry is changing right now, and it's changing very rapidly. And all the technologies that we're taking for granted with our smartphones and our apps, and that's starting to not only enter into the insurance industry, it's entering at a very fast, fast pace. Um, however, 
I do not think at any point in time that it's ever going to replace the human aspect and the, the physical being on site, a, a, a human being taking the scope notes and talking to somebody. Are there claims that that's going to be replaced? Yes, and, and we all have to, we'll have to ex accept that. Is it going to replace us as adjusters and individuals going out there? It never will. There's always going to be a human factor involved. And uh, that's one thing that I think is very important that I, I want people to realize that, you know, I've, I've talked to adjusters that said, oh my God, in five years we're going to be obsolete. No, we're not going to be obsolete. Some of this technology is going to create situations where we are going to have disputes that are going to arise. And human beings are going to have to be involved in that process and, and resolving those disputes. So I don't think that adjusters will ever be obsolete. I think we'll be able to utilize the technology to our advantage, make us better, make us more efficient. Um, but it's never going to replace us. And when I started, it was it was carbon paper. Yeah, it, it was. It was the, here, here. Here's the white copy. I keep the you know the yellow or blue was white. I, I don't even remember that's how long it's right, been, right. but I remember that our uh, our price list was given to us by a preferred vendor contractor once a month who would say, here, this is what we're paying for paint this month. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's we've come a long, long, long way. I, I remember when laser measuring devices became affordable, yeah. and they were all the rage in the early 2000s, oh. I mean, and now that's, you get one of those, that, uh, you go to go on Amazon and get a really high quality one for 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah. My name is Sarah Rusiniello. I am the Director of Litigation and Liability for CCMS and Associates. My role is, is to oversee the pre-litigation and litigation adjusters. Um, they're mostly desk adjusters. However, we also have a side of that that, that does uh, field inspections. It's mostly dispute resolution. Our ultimate goal is to try to avoid the case going into litigation. Um, it saves the carrier a lot of money and certainly makes the homeowners, uh, the policyholders, a lot happier if they can get their case resolved without having to go through the court system. Well, in most of these cases, the, the property has already been inspected once, um, and this is usually a situation, a CAT situation. And a lot of times that we find um, during a CAT situation, you can't always see all of the damage. The initial adjuster is going out and the property may not have full demo. There may be a, a tree on the house, but you can actually see all of the damage. So we send our dispute resolution adjusters in after the home is ready for an absolute full inspection. There's typically a contractor, sometimes a public adjuster or an attorney, who has gone out and inspected the property and they found some things that maybe were not visible during the initial inspection. So the dispute resolution field adjuster will go out, they'll take a look at everything that is being claimed as additional damage or new damage, and they try to reconcile the difference and ultimately reach a, a resolution that the carrier is okay with and that the homeowner is okay with as well. Definitely a little bit of negotiating, um, and it's certainly a skill that um, is developed over time, and we work with the adjusters. Uh, we provide training to make sure that they feel comfortable going into those negotiations. There's a wide variety. You know, sometimes it is beneficial to have a uh, an extensive background in property, but we also like to get people who uh, maybe don't have as much experience because we can train them to what, the way that we do it. Uh, we w CCMS likes to look at things a little bit different, and our goal is to ultimately get a final resolution. A lot of times, resolution with the release. Um, and so we like to be able to train that adjuster and let them know how to, how to get to the ultimate solution. Um, so a lot of it is also a conversation. And if we're not having a friendly conversation during an initial interview with a field adjuster, they're probably not going to have that same kind of conversation with the homeowner or contractor, or public adjuster, or an attorney. Um, if you cannot build the rapport, you don't build the trust. And that's a huge part of what we're doing is we have to build the trust with the people that we're working with. A lot of it is about concessions, and we may not necessarily agree 100% with the, the need for everything on their estimate. However, there are things that maybe the, um, the insured's representative can agree that they can shave a few things off of their estimate, and we can maybe add a few things that we normally wouldn't. However, in order to... Uh, just fully resolve the, the claim. It's something that everybody can live with. One of the, the services that CCMS offers is litigation management. Um, unfortunately, in the state of Florida, there are certain statutes that allow for cases to sometimes go into litigation a little bit quicker than other states. And so we offer desk adjusters to be able to manage that litigation process. So we have desk adjusters who 
um, work directly with defense counsel and provide guidance on how to move the case forward and either provide a, a solid defense for the case if the case does need to go to trial, or sometimes it's resolving the case and, and again, using those negotiating skills, what can we live with, what can we accept to ultimately bring the case to resolution. There's actually both. Um, we have some adjusters that will work with the desk adjuster, will work with the field adjuster and defense counsel to go out and coordinate a reinspection. Um, in those cases, we have an estimate from the other party, we know what they're seeking, and we go out and, and either um, put our eyes on it to say, you know, we cannot justify these additional items or we can understand where you're getting at for, to, to request payment for these additional items. And the, the field adjuster will uh, provide a, a full report to the desk adjuster. And the desk adjuster will discuss that with defense counsel. Um, and these are uh, all items that we use possibly in a mediation um, or just in, in your negotiations with the other attorney to ultimately resolve the case and, and avoid a trial. One of the biggest things that we see during an initial inspection is somebody who is rushed. And, um, you know, we understand that your schedule is very busy, but sometimes it creates more work for you and for the carrier um, on the other end if you rush through an inspection. You want to make sure that you cover absolutely everything. You want to make sure that you really address all of the concerns that the homeowner has. Take the time to talk to them. What is it that they're really concerned about? And, and get as many photographs as possible to really document the condition of the home uh, during the inspection. Uh, a lot of times we see that somebody makes a claim for a roof and they say there's just a small stain in the kitchen and if the gesture goes in and they only take a picture of the small stain in the kitchen, six months later the homeowner may say, well, but there was also some additional damage in this other room. There's no photos of that other room. We really don't know and a lot of times it's because the, the adjuster, the field adjuster just kind of rush through the inspection. It's very important to, to build the rapport with the homeowner. You want to make sure that they feel comfortable with you coming into their home. It's, I think sometimes people feel like it is an invasion of privacy that somebody is coming into their home. They're taking photographs. But during your initial calls, you want to make sure that you are building the rapport and make them feel comfortable with you going into their home and, and let them understand that you're there to help them and you want to be able to resolve this, this claim for them as much as they want to resolve it. Um, a lot of times this is the most catastrophic situation that, that somebody has been through, so you want to make sure that you're walking them through and, and letting them know what to expect, when to expect it, and, and give them the opportunity to really tell their story. Well, I think what sets CCMS apart from other um, IA firms is that our management team has a very solid foundation of working on the carrier side. So um, we know what the carrier is looking for and we know why they're looking for that. And so when you have a, a field adjuster who may get different direction that is a little bit different from what they're used to or they're new coming into the, the, this industry, they want to know why. Um, a certain carrier is act asking for something. And our management staff is able to provide the why and really spend the time with our adjusters to make sure that they understand what they need to do and why they need to do it. Um, I, again, I think it's the, the management staff is very open to discussion. Um, I, I think that there are no egos in this company. We're all here to help each other out. And that also means help the field adju adjusters out. We want to make sure that we're available to have a conversation if somebody has a concern or if they just want to talk something out, they're not sure which direction to go. And it's nice to know that uh, I may not have all the answers and I, I think it's okay for me to admit that I don't have the answers, but I can go to one of uh, somebody else in the management staff and, and ask those questions and we can have a collaborative discussion about how to handle a certain situation. CCMS offers um, a line of products for our clients that's uh, desk adjusting and all of the work can be done at the desk and um, during with the improved technology everybody is realizing that you can work remote be just as productive if not more productive uh, when you're working at home. And so we do offer a, um, services to our clients that are pre-litigation and post-litigation adjusting from the desk. Um, I know that a lot of adjusters do have a concern that I can't climb a roof or I just don't want to. I don't want to be outside. It's too hot. I don't want to deal with that anymore. Um, and it's, it is nice to be able to bring your experience as a field adjuster when you're ready to stop climbing on roofs or you're ready to stop being out in the heat or chasing storms. Uh, you can certainly do desk adjusting and your prior experience is going to help you 
uh, evaluate, fully evaluate the claim. Um, sometimes it's not always easy when you're looking at photos to understand what you're looking at, but if, you've, if you have the experience and you've done that in the past, um, it is certainly a lot easier to, to understand what's trying to be conveyed in those photos and have the conversation with the homeowner about what's going on at their home. The qualifications for a desk adjuster it varies on, on the type of work uh, that you are interested in doing. Um, there's certainly a need for somebody who has a, a vast um, prior field experience. It's absolutely beneficial. However, we've also seen just as many adjusters who are able to um, to learn based on the training that we provide. So we're always happy to take on somebody who is new new to the field and excited about learning. The biggest key is, is being able to or being willing to learn something new, take constructive criticism, um, take the feedback, uh, and, and and really ask questions if you don't if you don't know. Um, that's something that CCMS in general is, is very big on making sure that you ask questions. We want you to ask questions. Nobody knows all of the answers and we don't expect you to, um, but we do expect you to ask questions if you're not sure which direction to go. We do a hybrid of both, um, depending on what the situation is. We have had um, training classes where we've brought on several desk adjusters at one time. And again, depending on what the need of the, the client is, if we have access to the client system and are working exclusively, exclusively in the client system, uh, and we're bringing on several adjusters at the same time, we'll have on-site training and we walk through the client system to make sure that all of our adjusters are comfortable working in the client system and have a solid understanding of what that carrier is looking for in order to handle the claim. We also provide intermittent training um, throughout. As, as the need of the carrier changes, we the information is rolled out to one person to make sure that that, that person at CCMS has a solid understanding. And then, and then we provide the training to the desk adjusters. And sometimes that's virtual, sometimes that's on site. Uh, most recently, it's been more virtual. Uh, and with the technology, we're absolutely able to, um, to provide a lot of the same training that you would provide uh, with on-site training, but you don't have the travel if you don't want to. Hi, my name is Brock Bagley. I am the Director of Resource Management with CCMS and Associates. My primary function is hiring and onboarding of new adjusters. Um, as we expand throughout the, the country and different programs and things of that nature, we uh, have an active need for adjusters um, of all experience levels and really look uh, through every nook and cranny to make sure we get quality people. So I was brought on right after we uh, took over TWIA. TWIA TFPA came on as an improved vendor. Um, obviously, that's a huge responsibility and from a hiring standpoint, some very direct needs for that specific account. Um, when I came on, we were in a, a handful of states, shortly into 13 states after that. And as of this past week, we're now in 25. Um, looking to grow that very quickly. Um, it's, uh, it's very exciting. That's one of the things that drew me to CCMS. I spent 14 years with a smaller IA firm. Um, learned a lot, great time there. You know, Hernando and Cassie are, are absolutely amazing. And I just feel like I, I work with friends and not bosses. Um, they, they trust me, they, they have all faith that we're gonna get things done and I'm gonna do it correctly. Uh, they're there to support me in anything I need um, any tools, resources, anything. It's just very, very family oriented. For, for me, I mean, if I'm looking at an IA firm to feel valued, uh, I want somebody to communicate. Um, I don't want to be a number. Um, I know as, as companies grow, it's really difficult to maintain that personal relationship. And that's something we've had meetings about it. We don't want to lose that. We want to make sure whether it's me or whether my department grows and there's multiple people under me, I'm a phone call away. If you just need to talk, call me and talk. If it's a question on a claim, even though I'm not heavily on the claim side, I'm here. Um, and I want people to know that. You're not going to call and get an automated system and go through 14 different uh, you know, messages just to get to somebody. Yeah. So there's. A, a huge range in adjusters as far as communication goes. Um, I, I try to hit all of them. If you phone calls, emails, even current day text messaging. Um, a lot of adjusters I find it's just easier to text with. Um, checking up on them, how you doing? Um, how's your certification coming along? So I want to make sure that I'm, you know, gearing how I communicate with them to what their preference is. For an adjuster, do you feel comfortable 
working with a firm that you've met them in person. Um, like I said, my past with a smaller firm, I hopped in my car. I was easily able to go meet face to face, have a meal. Um, now as you grow, it's very difficult. You know, I'm based in North Carolina, company's home office is in Florida. We have adjusters in Texas, you know, Utah, Colorado, wherever. Um, you can't meet everybody face to face. Um, so a lot of adjusters may or may not be comfortable with that. And that's where phone calls, uh, Skype, Microsoft Teams meetings, things like that come in just to, I want them to get to know us, get to know us personally, professionally, and be comfortable with who they're working with. What I look for um, in my review of, of resumes, phone calls, discussions, um, personality is obviously huge in this business. Everything we do is customer service based. Um, are you well-spoken? Do you communicate well? Are you respectful? Obviously, experience is great. That's not the only thing, though. Um, there are a lot of adjusters out there that may be just getting started, maybe only have a year experience. Um, if you're willing to learn, a lot of people are sponges and can take it in. We have a phenomenal claims team here that I trust can teach some of the lesser experienced people um, how we need to do things based on our client instructions. I try to avoid people that look like have hopped around a lot. That's, real, that's a biggie for me, and that's pretty much in any profession. Cat adjusters are different. You know, they'll, they'll take multiple jobs, um, so you'll see that a lot. But if you see somebody that their resume lists 12 different IA firms, and it's, you know, 2018 to present, it's kind of, kind of a red flag that you're working for that many firms. Um, those are really kind of the biggies for me. So for, for a field adjuster, professional attire is tricky. You know, you're climbing roofs, or you're sometimes going in crawl spaces, attics. Um, I'm a big fan of the two-button golf polo, kind of the silky type material. Ball caps is always a tricky one. I, uh, I personally probably wouldn't wear one, but I know a lot of adjusters that do, and, and I understand it. You're on a roof, it's 100 degrees outside. It's okay. It's, again, kind of make sure it's not a, a ratty or torn hat. You know, something that looks professional. Khaki pants, cargo pants, you know, whatever it is. Just, um, just look professional. You know, that's, you're representing a firm, whether it's a 1099, a W-2, it doesn't matter. When you step on that property, you're representing that firm. Um, so we want to make sure that everything that CCMS stands for, you're, you're representing that to the policyholder. Yeah, so we currently have um, a wide range of opportunities that are, that are coming up for sure, both residential and commercial. Um, opportunities on some different accounts. We have a desk adjusting program that has absolutely taken off. It's doing amazing. Cat opportunities. We have cat commitments in a couple states spread out throughout the U.S. that probably 90 percent chance that a storm hits one of those three um, every year. Um, and I think that's another thing that sets us apart. Um, we have a wide range of kind of what we look for in different positions. Not necessarily large loss. I mean, it's, it's really easy to say complex and associate that with large, but complex could be a small claim that just happened to go sideways. Um, the initial adjuster maybe didn't do the best job, which has kind of put the, the carrier in a rough spot, and they need somebody to really go out and explore what happened, how can we get this back on, on track, um, or if you're dealing with PAs or litigated claims, um, there's obviously complexity there um, if you're, whether it's covered or not, coverage decisions. Um, you know, when created opening is always the famous words everybody wants to use. Well, what exactly is a when created opening? Well, that varies from carrier to carrier. Yeah, I mean, certifications are, are always a plus. It's, it's not a criteria that me personally, I'm like, oh, they have to have this. But it, it's, I associate it with like a college degree. It shows your dedication to the industry, shows you're willing to go above and beyond and learn new things um, and not just hop roofs every day. And, and it definitely can set you apart from other applicants. It's, it's tricky. Um, we actually, Bill and I just discussed this yesterday. We were talking about adjusters and specific clients and with the range that we have, it's a huge difference. Um, you have some carriers that are very time oriented, you know, you're on the clock from the second you get it. You got others like the complex losses. They're maybe not on the clock quite as much because they are complex. Education-wise, adjusters have got to educate themselves on who they're working with, make sure they know um, mistakes are going to happen. The, the most important part is let's learn from it, figure out what happened, why it happened, and how do you prevent it from happening again. 
Um, and that's really what we look for on a guideline standpoint is, can we tell you something, you get it done, and we don't continue to have the same problem over and over and over. Emails are very difficult to discern tone, and it's, I think, human nature to immediately read an email and be like, they're, they're attacking me. Um, There's no know. punctuation. Exactly, and, that, and that's not the case most of the time. So we like to make sure from a family-oriented relationship standpoint, we want to make sure we're keeping people happy, even if they make a mistake. Let's talk about it. Um, there's, there's no attacking of anybody like that. So for us, from a training standpoint, um, the biggest thing we have is our claim system. Uh, we use VCA, Virtual Claim Adjuster, um, great system, but not everybody's familiar with it. Um, some people love file track, some people have only used exact analysis uh, for everything. So what we did is we developed a training video that kind of goes through every single thing that we think an adjuster needs. And what we do is we send them the video with their credentials and then we say, hey, watch the video. If you need help, come back to us. We're here to help. Um, we have Jared on call anytime. Adjusters have questions, they're welcome to call me. Um, we want to make sure the adjusters are up to speed on the technology that we use because it helps us. If we get a phone call from a client, all they want is a status. I don't want to have to refer that call to the adjuster. I want to be able to look in the file, answer the question, and save everybody some time. So we're here to train as much as people need. Um, we have Glenn, one of our regional claims managers, that does civility training. Civility is required by one of our clients. Not everybody knows it. Not everybody likes it. Um, but he's dedicated to, to training people on that one specific program. So additional training is, um, you know, if, if somebody has the desire to do Hague or IICRC or um, for us with some of our accounts with the TWIA certifications, um, if, you, if you find that you have commercial knowledge and you want to take it to the next level, um, there's other things we can offer um, to try to help them get up to speed. It's, it's tough, man. It's, there's a lot of adjusters out there. Um, and you have to do something to set yourself apart. And I think professionalism is probably the number one thing I can say. Um, when you send your resume to somebody, put something in the email. I get so many resumes, literally. It's resumes attached, no text at all. Give me some detail, tell me about yourself. What, what's your passions? Um, why are you reaching out to me? Where did you hear about me? Um, any detail you can give. A resume doesn't tell the whole story. So sometimes you want to elaborate on that in the body of the email with a little bit more detail because as a company, whether it's me, anybody, we're going through these things. We have a lot of resumes to go through. You need to put something in there that's going to catch my eye. Um, that's probably the best advice I can give anybody. Yeah, the formatting is huge. Um, we're in a business where we have to write professional reports. If you can't write a resume that uses a consistent font throughout, um, spelling, grammar, um, little stuff like that is huge. And if I, if I get into a first page and there's four different fonts and two misspelled words, don't really matter what the content is, at that point I start to question, can they write a report? And then you know, little things like that can, can kind of set you apart from everybody else. Yeah. You need to shadow somebody even if it's just one claim. Go out with them, see how it's done, see how they do their measurements, see how they write you know, their roof diagram, um, see how they properly climb a roof. Um, I think that's a huge thing. And while no, you don't necessarily make any money doing shadowing, but the experience that you're gonna gain from that. So if I have two resumes, both of them have no experience, but one of them tells me they've been shadowing a senior 15 year adjuster for six months, Absolutely. You just picked up so much experience in that six months and you didn't actually handle the claims. I think that's huge. If uh, people want to send a resume to us, send it to careers at ccmsclaims.com. That actually comes direct to me um, and I'll be reviewing them and I'm the one that contacts people. If you would like to become a part of the family at CCMS and Associates, send your spell checked resume and cover letter to careers at ccmsclaims.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.